start, we're going to talk about a subject that, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I talked about how you got some schools that believe one thing, then you got the historians that kind of walk the path of this middle thing, and then you've got, you know, other schools that tend to think other things, and everyone's got their, you know, what they believe and all that kind of stuff, right? One thing that people tend to really wonder about, did ninjas, were they more uh, assassin base, you know, or were they more on the spies? This is not quite the same thing. One's objective is to go kill someone and come back, right? Um, and the other one's just gathering information, not, not really even any combat at all. You, whether you're Enin or Yonin, you're not being seen or your intentions are not being seen, right? So um, there's a big, big kind of big kind of talk about that. Now, one thing that you see us do that not a lot of the other, no, none of the other organizations do. We do Zetsu Mijutsu. You, there's, you can watch our ninja videos. You guys have been here for years. You guys know we, I have you guys run drills where you come out from cover, whether it's the edge of the foliage or whatever, you come from cover. You eliminate your sentry. We, do, we practice sentry removal. You drag them back behind cover. We practice those drills. We practice those drills because our tradition says that it's an integral aspect of training. Now, um, I want to read um, a couple quotes from a couple different sources and give you guys, and then read something from the actual uh, the Tomoru um, Shoden no Maki so you guys can hear that aspect and then you can hear where we're coming from from certain things. Okay, why? What makes us different from other schools, right? Because the majority of schools that you see, it's like, oh, I'm seeing, they, it's either practicing spine or practicing taijutsu or practicing maybe kobujutsu. Um, every now and again, they'll practice some sort of like throw powders and run. And even though those parts, those aspects are good in its essence, and a lot of other ninjutsu schools do those things, and everyone does those things, you know, I think that when you look at different Ryuha, they have a different focus, right? So like an example, in like Togakure Ryu, all of their techniques, whether it's the Santo Tanko no Kata, or the Shinobi Gaeshi Gata, or whatever, it's always them throwing shuriken, running, throwing powders, running, um, climbing up something, hiding. Like it, it's it's and that's not that's not you know obviously we teach Togakure to you as one of our seven traditions, right? But that you don't ever see any of that kind of stuff in Tomori at all, at all. Like that's just not something that that's it's it's aim. In Tomori you see you eliminate the target and you drag them back to cover. Do we have techniques which we've done in the Zetsumi Jetsu skills where you eliminate them in a certain way where you could take their jacket and put it on if you needed to to disguise yourself as one of them. So it's like it's just a much different mindset. And because this is the Tomoru Shinobi Keiko, I think you can't you can't take away Zetsumi Jetsu from Tomoru. It's an, it's such a very integral aspect of this art that none of the other ninja schools really focus on. They talk about it. They say they do it, but you never see those techniques or skills being demonstrated in any way. Not not in any type of high efficient level at, at all. It's just merely a, a, a something they talk about. You guys have all heard this particular quote. It's not anything new. This one's but it's going to start to paint this picture, right? So in the Bonsen Shikai, Fujibayashi says, "It's possible to kill the enemy general with shinobi no jitsu, and if this is done, the benefit will be immeasurable." This is a secret in Shinobi no Jitsu on the skills required to kill the enemy's commander. In a case where um, your ninja can kill the enemy general, then it will bring enormous benefit to the enemy, and, and the enemy will submit without fighting. So basically, to start out, it's pos it, it is possible to use ninjutsu to kill the enemy general, and there are secrets on how it should be done using that. Okay, just point. Let's just start with that. Um, Anybody who argues whether ninja or not assassins or ninja don't go kill people and all they do is like these little, you know, like if someone uses the analogy that a, a modern day ninja would be just some computer nerd that would just sit behind some desk with a laptop and, you know what I mean? That is not accurate. There's a Q&A section in there where Fujibayashi writes common questions and then he gives the answer. Clearly, people have asked him questions. Like, he's like, question, how, 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 right, or what, 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 and he's like, here's your answer. So the question is, it seems to be, and this is the question, it seems to be utterly without fact that there are ways for the ninja to kill the enemy general. So clearly, he's been asked so many times how do ninjas kill generals, 
that he felt it to be necessary to put that in the Q&A section. His answer to that in, his, in the Bonson Shukai is, there is a principle which is extremely subtle, therefore I should remain silent um, on, this, uh, on this topic at this point. So he's saying, yep, but it's so subtle, I need to remain silent on it right now. So you could tell it's one of those touchy things that he doesn't need to be putting on paper because mm -hmm. it could get him in trouble. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Someone finds it. Yeah. He obviously, the Bon Sinchi Kai is this big masterpiece, so he wanted, he wanted to take credit for the book. He wants to take credit for his knowledge. That's why he's writing so much down, right? Uh, but he also don't want to put anything in there that can come back and bite him in the ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to lean and back on some of those things. So I think, but I, so I think that's kind of important, okay? Now I'm going to read from um, this book here. It's called Ninja, the True Story of Japan's Secret Warrior Cult, right? By Stephen Turnbull. Again, he's, um, he's got a PhD in Japanese history, and he's done so many books on uh, the ninja and samurai and all that kind of stuff. Some of his books um, now with modern research... Um, even he says that some of them are maybe the information might not, not be completely accurate kind of thing. Um, I tend to like his books. I think his research is spot. I think he, he's, he's right, right on the number with many things. Just like everybody else, when you research things and you write things, you are looking at, you are writing it from a perspective and, you know, your opinion of facts, not so much exactly as is. So again, take everything as is. I don't think that buying these books, when you're looking at historical writings from PhDs, whether it's you know, Turnbull or Kasim or anything like that. I don't know that, again, I would put them in the same category as you're buying something like the Bon Sinchukai or the Book of Five Rings. It's a supplement. I, this isn't going to make your training any more enlightened, right? But I'm going to use this book as an example, okay? There's a time where uh, Tokugawa Iyasu, he came from Mikawa, right, as a little boy. And we'll talk about kind of a general overview of the single Kujurai a little bit later. But, so, brief snippet, little boy... He's born, he gets traded away at a young age for political reasons, he gets pulled from his family, and here's this five-year-old off somewhere, right? Uh, his name is, you know, whatever his birth name is. Then he goes back to Mikawa, he becomes the, the leader, and he gets a samurai name called Tokugawa Iyasu, which is what we know him as today, right? That's his historical name. Anyway, Tokugawa Iyasu changed everything. He was the one that kind of... Um, empowered ninja. He used the Iga ninja for many things. He used the Koka ninja for many things. In history, uh, there was a time where um, he needed help from the, from the Koka ninja. And he asked uh, this particular ninja, his name was uh, Tomo Saksada, right? And which in our tradition is one of our sokes, okay? But anyway, Tomo Saksada, and he asked him for help to raid this, this, this particular place, right? And I'm going to go through a historical ninja raid with you, the way it happened from a PhD in Japanese history, okay? It says, uh, we mentioned briefly at the state of this chapter the intimate relationship that grew between the future shogun, Tokugawa Iyasu, and the inhabitants of Iga and Koka. Between the, to between the Tokugawa and the Igen Ninja is closely connected with the, disas with the disastrous Igen Ninja uh, Revolt, uh, 1579-1581, which pop they're talking about the Battle of Iga Noran, when Oda Nobunaga fled into Iga and then just dismantled it, okay? That's what he's meaning here, which will be covered later in Chapter 6. We're not going there. Um, but anyway, but the employment of the Koka Ninja is much more straightforward and also very well recorded. But basically he's saying is there's, there's a connection between Tokugawa Iyasu and the Iga because of Iga Naran, but it's, it's hit and miss. It's piecemeal at best. But the, the connection between Tokugawa Iyasu and the Koga Ninja is very straightforward and very well documented. Um, I, I understand that most ninja traditions don't have documented proof that their Ryuha raided a fucking castle and took out hundreds of samurai, right? But Tomoru does. Fact out, right? So let me read this part to you, and then we're going to kind of move on. I put, Zetsumi Jutsu literally means ending life. This is the act of assassination is one of the fundamental teachings within the Tomoryu. We should first start out with understanding that shinobi are not just assassins. Shinobi are military soldiers with many skills, and assassination is just one of them. In approximately 1562, Tokugawa Iyasu wanted to hire the top shinobi to take a mission that was so extreme that it was almost certain death. 
He employed A.E. Koka trained shinobi from the Tomoryu, led by Tomo Saksada, uh, seventh soke of the Tomoru, to raid the outpost of the Imagawa clan that was guarded by over 200 samurai. The Tomoru shinobi of Koka infiltrated the castle, set fires to its towers, and killed all of the leadership along with over 200 armed samurai. This account of this assault was given in the Mikawa Gofuru Ki. In short, the Tomoru shinobi, led by Tomo Saksada, carried out a classic ninja knight assassination raid within the shadows of night. The Mikawa Gofuru Ki account adds many more interesting points of these methods used by the Tomoru shinobi. It is written that the Tomoru shinobi dressed like the samurai of the targeted area. This causes a lot of confusion as the opposing samurai did not know who to kill and whom they were up against. The way that the attacking Tomoru shinobi communicated with each other was genius. As they were trying to kill or be killed, they yelled a password or a special ki that would be shouted in order to let the shinobi know that they, who, who they are and whether they or not they should be killed. Following the battle, Tokugawa Iyasu granted a kanjo, which is a letter of commendation, to the Tomoru shinobi jonin, Tomo Saksada, praising the warrior for, the, for his performance at the kanjo. Not much is known of the kanjo that was issued to Tomo Saksada as far as the exact dates. However, the kanjo is authentic and is said to be the only kanjo in ninja history addressed to a jonin leader, which gives us great appreciation and importance Tokugawa Iyasu placed on the abilities of the Koka Tomoru ninja. Many historians say that there are not many ninja assassinations recorded in history. The truth of this statement, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't matter. What matters is the greatest ninja knight assassination raid ever documented in Japanese history is in the Mikawa Gofuruki and was executed by the Tomoru Shinobi headed by Tomo Saksada. So that's as far as I'm concerned. I could give a rat's ass whether all these other ninja historians and researchers say it doesn't exist. The greatest one in the history of Japan's his the Japanese history was from this tradition. The only reason only reason I brought up this book, right, is because this book backs up the facts of this book. I wrote this one, but like a Japanese PhD wrote this one. Did you catch it?